Willkommen alle zusammen. How to celebrate Wintersulweif and the proper Old Norse pagan tradition. Uh, this is not Yule, okay, as it is commonly referred to in the pagan communities. Uh, Yule was originally the first full moon after the winter solstice and three full moons after uh, Vetternater, which was the uh, start of the winter and new year. So Yule is actually the midwinter festival as it would have been practiced in pagan times and it would have been a full moon in January. In the Viking Age, it was moved by the Christian king Håkon the Good and he moved Yule back from the full moon following the solstice to the birthday of Jesus in order to try and get the pagans um, to become more Christian. It didn't work out so well, it didn't work out right away, it took probably many hundreds of years and they did a couple things different in different places, sometimes as late as a few hundred years ago uh, we have records in the folk tradition that uh, the normal Yule Christmas type celebrations were actually being practiced um, on the solstice, but um, Usually it would be on the 24th or 25th, um, but originally it would have been the uh, full moon after the new moon after the solstice, see my video I did on that. Contrary to popular belief, we actually have no records that the winter solstice was celebrated at all in the Norse world. Of course they did you guys, definitely of course they did. Focus on the cycles of the sun is absolute key to every single pagan culture in the world, especially in the north of Europe. Ancient humans, remember, who were following animism, and they thought that everything, including the sun, was a living, animate being with a spirit that could also die. The sun was fading, and we're getting to the shortest night of the year right now. If you were far enough north, the sun uh, did die, actually. You wouldn't see the sun for about a month in the middle of winter if you were from the furthest north parts of Norway. Uh, so the sun, if it didn't return and come back to life, guess what happens? We are all dead. Nothing is growing, it would be dark forever, and no human would basically be able to survive another year. So, of course, humans had traditions at this time, celebrating the winter solstice. I'm going over a few of the ones we have records of and why they did it, but just keep in mind that basically everything uh, was done to bring back the sun and let the sun continue along its cycle. So the first one comes in the oldest sources actually that we have about the Scandinavian people from anywhere, and that's from ancient Greek cartographer uh, Pythias from about 300 BC. And he traveled to Thule, which it was called, or which he called it, and we're pretty sure that that was Møre uh, or or uh, even as far north as uh, Trondheim, uh, Norway area. And he spoke about the people there and how the summer solstice there was no night, and at the winter solstice there was no day. And at the solstice they would light their bonfires on top of the hills and mountains as part of their traditions. So this source is a bit difficult because it's not a source that anybody uh, in modern times has uh, seen still existing. The original writing uh, written by uh, this Greek uh, cartographer uh, isn't still surviving so we have to rely on other scholars that used his work as a source and those uh, come from about eight to nine hundred years later and you know the three four five six hundreds um, such as Pliny the Elder, uh, Procopius, uh, Virgil, who have the, some of them who um, didn't actually even believe the reliability of his stories but we can say that we have record of this exact same tradition in Scandinavia lighting bonfires on the hills at both solstices, not just the winter, all the way from hundreds of years ago up until today. So we know this has happened as far as we have records in the folk tradition in Scandinavia and even earlier, the Pimstav, some of the earliest Pimstav uh, calendars from the 1200s uh, is marked on the uh, winter solstice. Uh, it's marked by a light or a fire. So this is a tradition, lighting at the bonfires on the hills and mountains that's pretty much been the same over at least 2,000 years. So the notion 
that just because we have things recorded uh, for the first time, maybe a few hundred years ago, recently in history, that people assume that that makes it not an old pagan thing is all a load of shit, okay? These rituals around the solar cycles is not a Christian thing. That's nothing that the Christians ever did or even encouraged to do or even would have allowed people to do. This idea is... This simple, animist, sympathetic magic that, that I always speak about. Um, when it's dark, in the middle of the winter, in the longest night, we light the bonfires in the east in hopes that the sun will also rise over the hills in the east. That is just one example of this kind of animist sun ritual done all over the world and we know was done long before Christian times in Scandinavia. There are lots more traditions like this. We just maybe only have records of them going back a few hundred years, but like um, the ancient Greece uh, recording of this tradition, uh, these other rituals uh, could absolutely, in my opinion, uh, be that old, just as old, if not over. So we'll speak about another one here, uh, Lussekatter, a popular Scandinavian baked dessert uh, that we eat at this time of year. It's in the shape of a swastika, which originally has a strong connection to the sun and its cycles. Um, this is actually more of a St. Lucia's Day uh, recipe. Um, it's supposed to be made on the 13th of December. It's called Lussekatter in Sweden. But in Norway, uh, they're still called Langnatskake, uh, so long night's cake, referring to the longest night of the year, which is the eve of the solstice. I don't even have to tell you guys, you already know the original pagan holiday uh, that the church came around and forbid, and they wanted to change the date of it so people would celebrate it on the death of one of their saints, but it was an original pagan holiday. We can also include most other circular things that are uh, hung up or, or used in this Christmas time tradition like that. Uh, Kringle, uh, Julekranse, wreaths, walking in circles around a Christmas tree. All things still used today in Scandinavian tradition. It's survived all the way up until today, most of these. And not just that, usually any other clockwise motions um, are part of this tradition too because that's the direction that the sun moves in. Again, the idea is to do these things, to cook these lussekatte, to have these wreaths, to walk around the Christmas tree. It's supposedly influencing the sun to travel along that same cycle going uh, clockwise. Um, just uh, so in hopes that this may influence the sun to keep returning and uh, go a part of its regular cycle. Another one, uh, very cool, uh, after the solstice, we can now cut our hair and beards. As I mentioned on the video a couple months back about Vetternatter, um, you don't cut your hair from the start of winter until the solstice has already passed. The idea is that if we let our hair grow and we don't cut it, then all the crops and plants and life in the surrounding farm, uh, villages and area will also be influenced to grow and germinate in this dark, cold time. It's just that idea that one action affects everything else in a similar way going on uh, these whole, uh, in, in the whole village or even the whole universe uh, as uh, I've spoke about with those sun rituals. And these records guys, by the way, they come from the Scandinavian folk tradition. All kinds of records of these traditions come from really scattered sources and from remote villages um, and they're very difficult to find but if you want to read more you can check out Vore Traditioner by Vega Solheim um, and he has that one available in English now. There's also a couple others, uh, Scandinavian folk belief and legends. I think even um, uh, Trildom has a, a few records of these types of things and traditions too, but that's about all you're gonna find on these written in English. Um, but these are these are all like rituals that I'm speaking of attested in uh, some small rural villages, uh, you know, going back four or five hundred years. Um, but of course, we can say they they might be a lot older than that. It's just in those small rural villages that might be the only place they uh, still survived. We can also uh, speak about decorating the pine and fir trees. 
although this is more of a Sami tradition actually that we have records of. Um, and the Sami, their pagan religion, uh, survived in Scandinavia much longer, all the way up until the 1800s. So they did some uh, winter solstice traditions like animal sacrifices, and they hung the offerings up in the uh, trees. They also hung up the Amanita muscaria mushrooms in the trees. They hung up uh, feathers, fur, and other especially... Um, uh, like uh, uh, red colored items like berries or mistletoe. Red objects symbolize the uh, blood and the life force and the idea there is that they give the life force to these evergreen trees in hopes that they will continue to survive the winter and uh, the new year to come because the evergreen trees are basically the only things, uh, some of the only things that don't die off in winter. So this uh, tradition was done more by the Sami um, and the Finns that we have uh, records of, but um, it was very illegal to do these things for Norwegians, you know, uh, up until a certain point. Um, so what they did uh, in the very basically uh, Germanic uh, cultural area of Scandinavia, instead of doing those types of decorations, they would sprinkle the evergreen trees with wine or glug, uh, which represents also the blood and the life force. Um, the wine represents blood and life force in pretty much every uh, culture and, and spiritual belief around the world. So they definitely did that in Scandinavia too, we have records of. People in both the Sami and the Germanic cultural areas of uh, Scandinavia also decorated themselves with red, especially the women. They would wear right white dresses and color it um, with uh, certain uh, red colorings, uh, certain parts of the dress, or they would wear red belts or wear red hats or things like that, again representing the life force. And we can finally maybe speak about burial sites. Um, it has been tradition in Scandinavia uh, to go see your family members where they have uh, been buried. You go to their graves, especially on the solstice or a little bit before, and you leave flowers or decorations, even if this is a Christian churchyard. We have burials all over Europe um, going back at least 5,000 years where the actual entrances to these burial chambers line up exactly with the sunlight on the winter solstice, uh, shining up the entrance to the uh, burial chamber or dolmen or, or whatever. In most, uh, it happens most in the Celtic areas of uh, Britain, but we find a good amount of them in Scandinavia and other parts of Europe too. And the idea and the theory behind this is, okay, these are 5,000 years old, we don't have any written sources from them, but the idea is that they were built this way so that uh, the sunlight could meet them and in this entrance on the uh, winter solstice and then the ancestral spirits would be woken up and they could be uh, reborn and and basically uh, the, it's the same as the sun cycle comes back life comes around um, and gets reincarnated at this longest night it also lines up with a lot of these uh, fertility rituals and when they would practice a lot of their you know, sacred marriages or a May Queen type of thing like that um, in the spring. If we're talking like March, April, May. Uh, so then the baby would in turn be born from now in the next month or two, really. So it lines up uh, well. So the ancestral spirit would go into the mother, or the pregnant mother, and uh, uh, take residence in the child that was about to be born. See the video I did on Easter and I speak a bit more about that. But that's all for this video. Those are just some of the things that we know or we can at least be fairly sure of uh, that they were doing in pagan times and things that are very easy for us to do today. Like I said, it's all revolves around the cycles of the sun and doing things to make sure the sun stays along its cycle and uh, comes back to life and in turn gives us uh, and our dead ancestral spirits uh, life as well. So lots more traditions actually though that we can speculate on um, and the origin and the meaning of. You can check out the podcast I did about a year ago with Bjorn from the Hominya Foundation. That link will be below along with all the sources as usual. So hope you all had a great solstice and uh, that's all for today. Have a nice